Inside this tank is a mini swamp forest, where nature created an ecosystem. As it transformed or simulated the life of an endangered species, diving underwater to see our creatures create their own little world and see the challenges they face as not all animals survive. This video shows the whole process of how we set up the environment and how we can help this fish survive. There was already life in the tank and these baby fish are going to a new home. But first, I've got to find a way to catch them. So I started by removing the floating plants to try and make it easier. The babies are too small to catch them using a net and maybe too big to catch them in a turkey baster. So I used a pot. It's an old tank, but I wanted to start fresh. So I gave it a little clean. Oh, and I didn't like the background, so that had to go. And that was it. Just a quick wipe down with some water and a sponge. I started off with a bag of soil. I wanted the tank to be as close as possible to nature. I used a mixture of potting soil, reptile earth mix and some topsoil that I had at home. But these are all just options and any soil will do. Even if it's got big chunks or stones, I just removed them by hand. Here, I dumped a load of soil at the bottom of the tank. This is going to provide nutrients to the plants. Next, I use a spreader thingy, whatever it's called, to move the soil around. All of the soil was spread around one inch deep, and after measuring that, I think I might book in for an eye test. Soaking the soil for 24 hours helps get rid of all the air pockets. And while I wait, I just visualise how I want the tank to look. To cover the background, I cut a piece of frosted vinyl, sticking it to the glass using some water and a little card to get rid of all the air bubbles. If there was any hanging over the glass, I just cut it away with a Stanley knife. I think it'd look best if I can hide the soil. So I'll use the thingy to make some gaps and I'm going to fill it with sand. After shuffling the tanks round, I found a new spot for it. It was time to start decorating it with sand and covering the soil around the edges. Then I figured it looked better creating a slope and making it higher towards the back. For this size tank, I think two inches of sand should be fine. While I was at my local fish store, I come across these elephant stones and a few pieces of wood. They didn't all match, but there's more than one tree in the wild, so I think it'll be alright. I needed one more thing before I started aquascaping. Fish safe super glue. Starting off with the rocks and the wood. I didn't really have a plan, so I just placed it where I thought it looked best. And here I'm just using a tiny bit of rock to hold the wood in position. Using small chunks of toilet paper between the rocks and the wood, I was able to super glue them both together. There wasn't much space left for the other wood, so I just placed it wherever it would fit. I wanted some open swimming space at the back, so I cut off one of the bigger branches. For a more natural look, I tried placing smaller rocks around the tank. I picked up these plants from a local fish store, and I think they're all pretty easy growing. But it wasn't enough to fill the tank, so I've ordered some more online. Any of the plants that I put on the wood, I just stuck them down with some super glue by the roots. The plants in pots didn't look like much, so I broke them down into smaller portions and spread them around the tank. So all I'm doing here is just pushing the plants down into the sand and not into the soil. And that was it, time to fill up the tank with water. So I put some rocks on top of the wood, hoping that it doesn't float. And now we're about to find out. Ooh. At the back I've put a heater and an empty filter that I use as a pump to make sure the temperature is even around the tank. For a last bit of decoration I chucked in a handful of oak leaves and some floating plants I'm not sure the name of. I just took some out of another tank. The first day is done and now it's time to look for a fish. I knew what I wanted, I just didn't know where to get one. Ten days had passed by and it looked like a completely different tank. The water looked like a cup of tea. Dirt was building up around the inside of the glass. And there was something growing on the wood. It looked like jelly slime. So it's time to send in the cleaners. 
two horned nearite snails. Oh, that must be a delivery. Welcome the wild betta, better known as a betta, Mahachai. After a long journey he looked really pale, and he was curious to explore the tank. Betters are known for jumping, so it was important to put on a lid. Ah, luckily, this one fits from another tank. Palm trees. These play a big role in the natural habitat. There's more on that later, but for now, these are going to act as a filter. The beginning of a swamp forest, where plants and trees soak up energy from the light source. The fish was enjoying his home and starting to show his colours, so I decided to give him a name. Mmm, my Maki. The David Attenborough Nature Reserve. I was out looking for some free fish food in nature by collecting the jar full of leaves and anything else that was breaking down in the water. After taking the jars home and placing them in the windowsill, tiny creatures were beginning to multiply. Healthy bacteria was growing which was a key part of the ecosystem, all working together creating a balance within the water by consuming the excess waste in the aquarium. It's always good to have a bit of extra help, so I got sick shrimp to help out too. And I'm hoping that Mackie doesn't mind sharing his home, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Maybe it's best to start with two at a time. He was straight onto him and I don't know what's going to happen next. There's nowhere left to go. Everything was growing well, and as the new plants grow, the old ones die. The surface had become overgrown with floating plants, stopping the light from getting down to the plants below. With a little bit of airline, I joined the ends to create little windows into the tank. Removing the floating plants inside will help the light get through. And not only that, it looked great to view from above the tank, with the palm trees reflecting off the water. It's time to take a closer look at why the better Mahachai has become endangered in the wild. In a handful of places around Thailand, the better can be found in swamps, pools and ponds where each male has his own territory. The water's become tanned from old leaves rotting away in the water, but this is healthy for the fish. It gives protection against bacteria and fungus. The leaves work like a herbal tea bag. The water lit up by thunder and lightning, and the fish were straight on alert. As the water goes dark, it's a dangerous place. In the forest, the wind was beginning to rise, and the light rain started to fall. Then all of a sudden, it come crashing down. As the raindrops hit the surface, I noticed the better fish stayed lower down in the water. And something fell from the trees. I don't know what it is, but it looked like a little pod. Even the better was curious to come and see, as it slowly floated around the surface. In the wild, the betters are insectivores, feeding on loads of tiny little bugs and insects. A group of flies made their way onto the pod. But what they don't know is what's lurking beneath the surface. The flies are spreading out, finding cover on floating plants. But the fish are seeing movement and jump straight in for a snack. The snails were like little dustbins, slowly moving around, collecting waste. The floating plants was like a safe place for the shrimp. Always grouping together, but surprisingly I didn't find any babies. Or maybe, Maki might have ate them. From what I've seen though, they get along just fine. The betters habitat is close to a growing population of people, causing the fish to relocate away from the farmer's fields. And it's becoming longer each year until the rain returns. Their natural habitat must be protected, but there's one other thing we can do. In a small puddle at the base of a Nipa palm tree, Maki has found a new friend. A female betta has come into the area. Maki lit up, showing his iridescent colours. By flashing around the tank, he was doing his best to impress the female. 
Within 30 minutes, he was building a bubble nest. It's a place for potential eggs and to show the female that he's ready to breed. All of a sudden, she burst with colour and was following the male around the tank. As he continued the bubble nest, he would race back to the female to show her the way. He was relentless, waiting for the female to be released. Working away until finally the bubble nest was complete. When the female was released, they immediately put on a show. She was waving in the water as the male approached, flaring his fins. Everything was running smoothly and it looked like the female was taking a break. That wasn't part of the script. Things were starting to heat up and the male was trying harder to lure the female towards his bubble nest. The female went into hiding and I was thinking about taking her out. I was watching closely and all of a sudden she appears. It was like a fresh start. And all of a sudden, magic begins. The female looks totally relaxed as the male wraps himself around her. They continued the same process for over an hour, whilst the male is still working hard to build his bubble nest. One bubble at a time, and as time goes on, he increases in colour. I was worried the female wasn't carrying any eggs, and finally, one begins to fall. They had finally mastered it, and the eggs were coming faster and faster. The male was even collecting eggs straight from her egg spot. Each time she was finished, she would chase them off. The eggs were small and hard to see, until the male released a big batch into the bubble nest. It was now his full-time job, making sure all the eggs stay up in the bubble nest. It was only a couple of days and they had hatched, but unable to swim, the dad was there to catch them. Over, over and over again, I left a dim light on for days so we could see. After around a week, his mission was complete. All of the babies were free swimming. It's time to return to his home. He didn't eat the entire time, so I've got him some treats. It's day 100 and he's thriving in his ecosystem. The tank pretty much runs itself and I've only had to trim the plants one time. Even the shrimps are happy. At first I didn't see them much, but I think they've all become friends. The swamp forest. Home to the better my chances. The mission was complete, but this is only the first and we have many options. 